Jackson! Officer Jackson, move those prisoners! Officer Benton! Kitchen's a staff! Officer Townsend, those rocks ain't gonna break themselves! What are you standing there for? Get moving! What are you looking at? Go on! Get moving! You! You! You with the hammer? And you, you'll do. We need to perform a work detail out near Blackwater. Come on, get in. Open the gate. Come on, Milliken. I tell you what, old Jameson is a wretched, sour old bastard, and no mistake. You lot stay calm in there. You aren't saying nothing. Well, you are now. Shut up. You know, my wife has acquired ideas significantly above her station. She's been reading too many goddamn books. Personally, I'm against education. Women, I mean. And men, I guess. Unnecessary doesn't add much to the world. Education. Good day, gentlemen. Oh. Don't do anything stupid. Nobody gets shot. Act like fools, and the pair of you will be dead within a minute. Now, what are your names? Jenkins and Milliken. Well, Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Milliken. Throw your guns to the ground and get on down here. That's it. Very glad to meet you. It's not worth being rash. You boys get paid a salary. You get that salary whether these people escape or not. Your wives presumably want you alive. Let them out. Now, please. Okay. Okay. You all run away. Aside from you. Try to stay out of trouble. This is a stroke of good fortune for all of you. Use it. Now, Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Milliken, be so kind as to uh, quickly run away before somebody gets shot entirely unnecessarily. Go on, don't look back. Mr. Went, I believe it was $50 we agreed on. It was. Here's 50 each. Each? Yes. Now get out of here, both of you. My employer and I appreciate your professionalism. All we did was stand there and look tough. And you did it fantastically well. Good day, gentlemen. Now, sir, how about you pick up these guns and we move out? My mistress is waiting for us. Come along. Then you better get on this horse. Not much of an animal, but they haven't got far to ride. Yeah, I waited on them moving you some weeks. I can wait a while longer. It ain't time for you to ride off on your own. Not quite yet. Now come along. Ready? Wonderful. I hope you'll forgive the secrecy. My employer particularly values discretion. My name is Mr. Horley, by the way. Six months at Sisica Penitentiary, awaiting a hanging for a murder you did not commit. Must have felt a whole lot longer, my friend. You still seem strong, though. I mean, doesn't look like breaking all those rocks has left you entirely broken, in body or in spirit. I hope I am right about that. Rounding you folks up in those sham trials, they were a disgrace. Made a mockery of the rule of law. Still can't quite believe they got away with it. There's others convicted when you were. Came out breathing fire. Maybe you're like that too. Guess we'll see. Or maybe you just want to put it all behind you, forget you were in there at all. That would be fine, of course, but you will listen to my mistress first. She spent a good sum getting you folks out. 
you owe her an audience, at least. You've been away for a while, so we'll help you get set up in the world. And if you want to accept our offer, you can. He's just up here. There's the camp. Hit your horse. I'll wait. This way. She's anxious to meet you. <clears throat> Madam, we're back. Hello. Jessica the clerk, how do you do? What did you tell him? Nothing, as we discussed. Thank you, Hawley. I do hope we haven't inconvenienced you dreadfully. But seeing as you were due to be hanged in a week, I'm sure you don't object too strongly. I know you're innocent. Well, <laughs> not perhaps exactly innocent, but not guilty of what you were accused. I know you and those who were with you that died were little more than patsies, and that you were set up by one of three men or a woman, possibly by all of them. I can't be sure, but that is all I know so far. And one of these people also made Mrs. Leclerc a widow. And I will avenge my husband's death, so help me God. But I will not avenge it upon them who did not cause it, or caused it unwittingly. Oh, anyway, I'm sure this is all a touch confusing and melodramatic. Oh, where are my manners? Holy, please show our guests to their tent and give them some fresh clothes to put on. Very good, madam. Then serve us both a little refreshment. Certainly, madam. This way. You'll find a change of clothes in there, alongside a few other items you might need, a lasso, a knife, and a lantern, I believe. That looks more comfortable. Hawley? Here, madam. Your very good health. I suppose it beats dying, hmm? Mrs. Leclerc's husband was murdered by one of his business partners. And I intend to find out which one. Or rather, I intend for you to find out and kill them. You're the only person I could possibly trust to do whatever it takes. Because you and your accomplices, you're the only other victims of their lies still alive. You see, you walked into the town at approximately the same time my husband was shot in the back, but by another gun, firing different bullets to those you possessed when you were arrested. These bullets. This was their mistake. You were rounded up and sentenced to death, all because you came to town and didn't talk too much and seemed like you were nasty. Anyway, here they are, the people who run Blackwater. Mr. Jeremiah Shaw, banker, real estate speculator, and crook. Mr. Amos Lansing, ranch owner, speculator, and crook. Mrs. Grace Lansing, his wife, Society patroness, lover of the arts, crook, and my former best friend. Teddy Brown, her disgraced brother, outlaw, wanted man, and still in contact with them. All I ask of you is your help in finding out quite what happened. Mrs. Leclerc would like to help you get back on your feet, get back to work. Whatever your work may be, I don't judge. You want to rob? Rob. You want to save innocent folk? Do that as well. But you need me just as much as I need you. I think we all understand each other. I hope we do. Good. I look forward to rewarding you for killing those who made me a widow. My husband was a true believer in this country and in the West. He was killed for greed. Foul greed when there's quite enough for everybody. I don't care what your scruples are as to killing. I will take the full burden of that sin upon my shoulders. Goodbye, for now. Then Hawley, go introduce him to nice Mr. Cripps. I think you'll like Cripps well enough. He's long past his prime, of course, but uh, he hasn't gone entirely crazy just yet. And he will help you better than most of his ilk. Crips! <clears throat>
Get up. Oh, hello, partner. Harley. <laughs> this is your new boss. Oh, pleased to meet you, partner. J.B. Cripps at your service. We'll pay to get your camp established. Mrs. Leclerc is a generous benefactor. And, uh, where are we headed? Oh, sir. While Cripps is establishing your camp, perhaps you can go to the station and see the clerk, then head to see Clay Davies. He's a horse thief and uh, not a terribly nice one. Then meet Cripps back at your camp. See you shortly, boss. Good luck. Hello. You must, uh... You must be a Harley's friend. He's one of us. He said you also were a discouraged man. I'm very discouraged. Disappointed, Alden. That's me. Anyway, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I find your reticence charming. Real charming. By the way, I heard you might want to earn a little money. Well, some gentlemen have been robbing our stages, and they are not part of the club, if you catch my meaning. If you can make them go away, I'm sure they will have something of interest to you. They're up in tall trees. See what you can do, okay? Here, by the way, a catalog. The latest issue just came into this armpit from a land more civilized. And if all works out, well, my colleagues and I move around these stations as needed. And all of us are very discouraged. We will all help a fellow sufferer with pertinent information. Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> I'll win again. <laughs> Did Horley send you, Pop? I'm Clay Davies. This is my brother, Clive. He don't talk. 
Maybe you two will get along better. <laughs> Maybe not. Listen, I heard you wanted to earn some money. So, there's a gang of ne'er-do-wells. They are a bunch of degenerates, not good people. They're out of Manzanita Post with a bunch of horses they stole from me. <laughs> well, that's a lie, but they stole them off a fella I was gonna steal them off of. <laughs> Maybe you could get them for me. You think you could do that for me, Pop? Oh, look. Here are your friends. Well, good. Meet me at the stable in Blackwater once you have the horse flesh. And I'll pay you good. Oh, and Pop, Horley wanted me to remind you any decent work you can find, take it. But just try to stay out of trouble. Oh, and once you give me those horses, well, after that, we'll talk again. Oh, I do so enjoy these conversations. I'm used to them on account of my brother. Let's go, Clive. was right about you, dead right. Ain't that dandy? Get that horse hidden away, Clive, and ready to move out as soon as we can. All right. Here's the money you earn. Now listen, Horley came by and gave me a message. He said to go see your friend Cripps up at your camp. Now listen to me for a second. Any other decent horses you find, we'll buy them. Just as soon as we are set up, okay? Nice meeting you. You know what? Hold on, boy. I call him boy because I'm older. 30 minutes, he went black. <laughs> Let's give our friend here back the horse. It's yours. A sign of faith and future business. If you want to buy any extras or sundries for the animal, head inside. They've got a lot available. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Come on, Clive. How do you get on with Clay Davies? Horrible little wretch, in my opinion. Pop this and pop that. I'd like to pop him, a slime bucket. <laughs> anyway, I've got everything set up. Well, uh, what we have so far, place is pretty nice. I uh, think you did a good job for you. I'll earn my keep. When you get too old to fight, what choice have you got? It's either work or beg. And I'd rather work. Oh, uh, I saw uh, Horley. Now, he wants you to come down and meet him in Blackwater when you get a chance. I think he might have some work for you. Oh, and uh, uh, while you're out on your travels, you may see some folk with uh, employment opportunities. Good folk, bad folk, looking for a tough guy with a gun to help him. Up to you if you uh, listen to him, I guess. You know, I I used to like that kind of stuff. At one time, I almost helped a clown steal an elephant. <laughs> but that's a very silly story. Welcome home. Make yourself at home. It is your home. <sighs>
Who's that Batman? Hello, Mr. Jones. Uh, I said, who is that? Is that a kind man? I is that a good man? I is that a bad man? Is it the devil? Maybe it's all of them at once. Maybe there ain't no devil. There's no kindness uh, neither. Uh, you is always a strange one, Horley. Uh, how is Mrs. Leclerc? About as you'd expect. I expect a lot. It's mighty bad business. Leclerc was a good man, a, a fine man. That he was. <laughs> and, and this fella? Well, that's their business. Oh, that's the world's business. The world's business is kindness and gentleness and, and evil and, and brutality. What else is there, mister? Well, there's a whole lot else besides, like lust and greed and stupidity. Oh, Mr. Jones is stupid. Oh, Jones is old. Oh, Jones has cooked himself in the sun. I know, I know. Get yourself something to eat. There's fellas need help. Maybe this fella can help them. Maybe. They're, uh, they're on the run. Yeah, that ain't my business. My business is what they do hereafter. That's my business. Well, they certainly need money. Yeah, there's always money. Money for them is as good, and money for them is, is not so good. But well, maybe they could first go see the sheriffs and see what work is afoot. I reckon, it, well, for now at least, we might as well try. The sheriff at Blackwater, he needs help. No, not the fella that arrested you. That was the marshal. The police chief, he's a decent enough fella for all we know. Poor bastard is overrun and, and he don't want old Jones. There's a couple other sheriffs that need help. A fella from Valentine, he's at uh, the Painted Sky Ranch. The Tumbleweed Sheriff's at the Tumbleweed Jail and the Blackwater Sheriff, he's at Pike's Basin. Maybe that'll show us what kind of fella this is. Hmm. Go and pay him all a call. That's what I reckon. Maybe, I guess we will see. Meet me back here after you've seen them. What are you gonna do about it, Sheriff? About what? My stolen property. Well, ain't much I can do about it. I ain't got the manpower to go after Bob Crawfish. Howdy. How do? I pay your goddamn wages, me and folks like me. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Arnsdale. Really, I am. But there ain't nothing I can do about this. Not without more support and funding. Will you go for me? Wait, what? Go. See if you can retrieve my lawful property from some goddamn thief. Ain't nobody knows who took your stuff, mister. I seem like some kind of liar. Is that why you won't help me? No, but... Listen, get me Bob Crawfish and his closest associates by any means necessary. No, not by any means necessary. Kill nobody. Ain't nobody convicted of nothing. I was robbed. Get them and bring them to me just down from Fort Riggs Station, and you will be handsomely paid. Sheriff. Mr. Arnsdale. Hey, get yourself gone from here!
keeping his hands clean as usual. Nice to see you. Over here! It's me! Bob Crawfish! Hello, Clinton. Hello, Clinton. How have you been since we robbed you? Where's my property? I don't rightly know what you're talking about, yes, Clinton. Yes, you do. My fine collection of Staffordshire China, gone. My paintings of scenes in Italy, gone. My collection of photographs of fairies, gone. It's all just a big mistake. Where are they? We invested in them together. You owed us money. I did no such thing. Where are my things? In the basement of your sister's house. My sister? God damn her to hell. Here. Here's your money. Kill these men, will you? In fact, don't kill them. Leave them on the tracks. Thieves! Please, come on. Then I'll come on. You're not gonna because it's in Staffordshire, China, and an argument between a man and his sister. <laughs> I knew you were greedy. I didn't realize you were evil. Cold-blooded killers. That's what you are. This is a black mark on all of you. Shame on you. Shame on you. It's cruel is what it is. Damn you. Damn you to hell. No. No! No! <laughs> You're an imbecile. A what? An idiot. I'm sorry. He said he wouldn't run away. Shut up. But please. But just he... shut up. They're going to fire me. Oh, you, you'll get to keep your job, but they'll fire me, and they've got every right to fire me, because I'm the idiot who employed you. Oh, look. Guests. <laughs> Are you a moron, partner? Huh? <laughs> Well, you can't be any worse than us, because this idiot, this idiot right here, just let the most notorious con man in the whole goddamn state walk clean out of a cell, clean out, and not a shot fired! Now, uh, if you can get him back for us, we'll happily pay you. How about that? Good. Good. Now, see, what I figure is I figure he's headed on down to Pike's Basin. So you go down the canyon and you get him. And I'm going to beat this poor dumb bastard with a stick. And I'll try and join you on the other side. Come on.
okay? Please! Let's get this over with. Shit! Oh, Lord! Come in, as me, I go free, and you get rich. Oh, and I won't kill anybody else. I swear, I'm reformed. I'm a changed man. Please, please, I'm begging you, set me free. Have a heart. Don't be a fool. Fine, take me in then. You're too dumb to know a good deal when you hear one. Got him? Good. Real good. Look. Put him up on my horse there. I, I didn't do There's nothing. the money I promised you. <laughs> it's nice seeing you again, buddy. Name your price. It's oh. gonna be even nicer. I've got money. Watching you die. I've got a lot of money. Just name your price and I'll make you rich. Oh, do be quiet. Come on, boy. See you later. got to help me. I can't help you, mister. That's way out of my jurisdiction. My job is stopping folks from getting shot on these streets. You know that. She's my wife. She's my goddamn wife. They'll, they'll do terrible things to her. You've got to help me. Maybe these people can help you. Them? Sure. Why not? Most lost and kidnapped folks are found by bounty hunters and such like. Will you help? I'll pay. Handsomely. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, Allison is the sweetest girl. She's quite a bit younger than me, you'll see. But better that way for wives, I, I, I found. But they took her. The outlaws, I believe. Up, up, up to Twin Rocks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you!
He sent you, didn't he? He sent you. Well, I'm not coming. I can't go back to him. We're in love. Leave us be. Look, I'll give you all we have. It ain't much, but it's something. Just help us escape from here. Come on, please. I'm not going back. Cliff, you swore. You swore I wouldn't have to go back. They'll have to kill me to get to you. Come on, folks. Have a heart, please. I think they're gonna help us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Come on, wagon's outside. Money there, too. He will have sent men to watch you people. They'll know you're trying to help us. Then we best be quick. How many more of them we gotta kill? He'll never leave us alone. He'll keep saying you kidnapped me until some other fool comes and kills you. Or me, or, or both of us. No. We'll run. Somewhere hot. Mexico. Australia. Here, take this. Thank you for being a decent human being. Tell him we drowned. Or got hit by a train. Tell him to go hang himself. Tell him whatever you want. Just let us go. Cliff, isn't it all so romantic? Yeah. There you are. How'd you get on? He got on just fine. You know he did. What? I know he did. You see it in the sky. You smell it in the air. He ain't no saint, but he's a good and a fine man in a nasty world. <laughs> An American, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the madam picked well. Horley, this fellow will do more than Avenger. With any luck, He'll save us all. Oh, there ain't no luck, Mr. Jones. It's just a man's heart, not much else. Well, he's got a good one, a fine one. Send him to help out the marshal. The whole damn place is going to shit. And we need more good fellas to let us loons rant in peace and howl at the moon in safety. Maybe. Oh, but, but, don't you and the madam Kill the boy with vengeance, nor kill him inside with grief. Like you said, he's no saint. But like I always say, if you need to earn some money and stay somewhat out of trouble, go see Marshal Davies. He's supposed to stop every bastard killing innocent folk. Of course, uh, it's the nature of the thing that good men go bad and bad men some of them go good, but the marshal will see you right on that. World always needs good men, and finds it easier to birth the bad ones. So you're Horley's protégés, huh? He sent word you was decent. I hope so. 
This land is full of scum. I spend most of my time thinking they're better off left to it. Ah, they're good ones. Real good ones. Hard of pure cold. Go away, old man. I told you to go away. I'm going, Mr. Marshall. I'll go. Tom Davies, U.S. Marshal. See? I'm going. Been sent on a trail of a band of killers. I'm still going. This one, uh, Alfredo Montez. Killed a family up near Thieves Landing. Did some unspeakable things. He's one in four states and two countries. Now, I think he's holed up near Manzanita Post. You take a ride with me to take a look? All right, then. Let's go. You got your horses? I got a man been tracking him. When I left him, it looked promising. We all know a trail can go cold in a heartbeat. Particularly if the one you're tracking don't want to get tracked. Fortunately for us, signs point to Mr. Alfredo Montez not caring one fart for who is on his trail. Men been coming up from New Austin to join his merry band for days. Del Lobos, for the most part. So we're in good company. Y'all got bows? Something like that? Get them off your horses if you do. Coming up on the post. Now, I cannot be seen to get too close to any of this. I'd be causing a crime or whatever the damn law is. Well, the thing is, is, uh... Well, anyway, here's Lee, the fellow we're supposed to meet. Hello, Tom. Uh, friends, how's it going, Lee? Yeah, well, Montez is wily. You know it and I know it. He knows we're coming, Tom. He's holed up and they're waiting for us. Place is crawling with guards, patrols, everything. It's gonna be tough, you know? Mm. Well, that's what I pay you all for. <laughs> Paying us to do your job. Well, I can't go and kill a man in cold blood, Lee. Not while I don't have the evidence I need. But I can turn a good old-fashioned blind eye to an unfortunate dispute that I did not see and results in the death of some undesirables, the cause of which is unknown to me and other authorities. Is that clear? Nope. Not remotely. Then that's perfect. <laughs> Good luck in there. <sighs> All right. Come on, let's go. Bring boats if you got them. Or anything will give birth. together. Group ahead. Figure out how you want to handle this. They can go down at once or one at a time when the others ain't looking. It's spread out all over this hill. That seems us just fine. We might be fortunate if they knew we was coming. Hold, riders. Take them down or let them pass. 
It's all the same to me. Bastard's head. Come here. Okay. We're going back to Manzanita. I got a head to give to the marshal. Just fine. Yeah. Here. Here's his head. Oh. Very civilized. Yep. <laughs> well, this should show folks that we're willing to bring law and order any way we can. Hmm. But this ain't Montez. Hmm? At least it ain't Alfredo Montez. That's his brother. Ah. Here's some money. Lee, here's yours. You lot, here's yours. <sighs> it's less than I promised, but more than nothing. Given that you killed the wrong brother, it's mighty generous of me. <laughs> now, let's be clear. Jorge Montez was a no-good son of a bitch with a price on his head. Only in that family was he considered a saint. All right, friends. I'll be seeing you. Maybe up in Van Horn, if you have any chance. <laughs> My next lead is that maybe uh, Alfredo Montez will be there. <laughs> killed the wrong goddamn bastard. Well, I never. Well, these things happen, Lee. In fact, they happen more often than we like to admit. Well, there you are. Look, I'm a marshal, so my jurisdiction ends at the city limits, even if the town in question is a no-good dump like Van Horn. I go in there, I got even less rights than you do. Any decent hoodlum knows that. Montez is in there. At least I think he is. Or some of his boys are in there. So. He's in there, Mr. Marshall, like I told you. This is Josie Dawson. He's in there or his boys are. Hold up in my saloon. We'll, we'll get your saloon back. Or they will. Thank you kindly. Now, the others said there'll be more coming down from up north. They's talking about some folks killed Jorge Montez. Oh, you go... When that was us. You go see if you can find the bastard. Or kill some of his men as they head into town. Do both. Just don't get caught by any law. What you're doing is highly illegal. Highly moral, too. So in my book, it's okay. I just can't do it myself. Good luck. Well, I made some food if you're hungry. Oh, yes, ma'am. That would be mighty fine. Oh, hey. Uh, I heard from your friend, Mr. Horley. Uh, he said his mistress really needs something and wanted me to remind you to meet him south of Armadillo. He said that would make sense to you. Anyway, you should get going.
Come along. That wasn't Montez. He was just seen on the road in the country with some of his boys. We can get him. This is it, Montez. Justice will be mine. Let's ride! You deal with those men okay? I bet you did. Guess we return the city of Van Horn to the bus of degenerates and call it home. <laughs> Don't matter that it weren't Montez. It was almost as bad as him. And deserving of what they got. When we're done, he won't have a friend left in three states. <laughs> yeah. This is a job like any other, but... I ain't gonna pretend to you that I don't enjoy aspects of it. Alfredo Montez is a right, proper bastard. You met his men. You certainly met his brother. <laughs> well, he's a damn sight worse. Today, we're gonna make sure he gets his due. First off, Montez survives this. We get a rope around his hands, we put him on the back of a horse. Second off, his people go. Or says we need one man on the gallows a couple weeks. One push back. And thirdly, that's all there is to say. Hit them hard and make it ugly. Sure as hell wanna leave a mark. <laughs> Thomas Davies, right? Yeah, I know him. I know all of you. You killed my brother. Just try and take my head, okay? I'll take the marshal's other eye and both of yours. I'll burn your house down and fuck your mothers. Putas, all of you. You think you're so good. Alfredo Montez. <laughs> It's been quite a time chasing you, my friend. I know you. I will kill you. I think that's unlikely. A whole lot more likely is you're gonna have your neck broken while these folks here watch and laugh and say what a nasty bastard you are. We shall see. A thousand dollars to whoever sets me free. Well, these folks here have something money can't buy. <sighs> Honor, dignity, and a sense that not everything is for sale. And they are as foolish as you. And they are. But they're still getting paid a fair price for a job well done. <laughs> Madam, I implore you to be sensible. Oh, I am being sensible. I swore I would kill them, each and every one of them. From the way I see it, I will do. I'm afraid my mind's made up. But Mrs. LeClerc, Teddy Brown, he's just a second-rate common no-good horse thief. You kill him and the rest of his boys, well, you wind up in jail. Or worse, and we will never find out who killed your husband. You know it, and I know it. I believe Teddy Brown killed my husband. If he did so, he did it on behalf of his sister, her husband, or Jeremiah Shaw. Perhaps, Besides, but... he's holed up in there, besieged by marshals. Marshals? What good did a marshal ever do anyone? That's why we'll send in our professionals to get the job done, and no one will know you had anything to do with it. It's too early to show your hand, madam. Okay. You, come with me. And remember, these are the people that put you in jail. So don't overly concern yourself with pity. Madam, stay here. Please. Come on, we gotta go. Now, I know you're willing to do good and bad as it suits you, 
Maybe that's everyone's right. Maybe it's the right way to be. You seem to live by your own rules. In some ways, I admire that. Although maybe at times you seem a touch confused? Confusing? I don't know. But I hope, either way, good, bad, or plain indifferent, after all she has done for you, that you will be loyal to my mistress. Kill Teddy Brown! Not out of vengeance or righteousness, but out of duty to her! Compassion for her! I think she got away with taking my master and taking your freedom. Show him he has it. It's what you owe. Brown's shown himself to be a desperado. More than his other three conspirators. He wears a gun on his hip like the one that shot my master. He's dangerous. He's made himself very hard to kill. You get close enough, you'll see. I've tried to make the fight somewhat even. Then just wait till we get there, okay? The marshal and his men were in hot water when I left them. Pushed off their guns and almost out of the fight. Let's hope things have improved to touch. There's the fort. We'll find the marshal. Up here. Come on. They were on the other side of this. Are you getting on, marshal? Well, that bastard is holed up tight as he can be. I've already had two men shot since last we spoke. That's too bad. Luckily, I brought in the cavalry, so to speak. You have, huh? Yes. My associates. And what's more, I think I found a way of ensuring they don't get themselves shot. Like your deputies. Put those on. Teddy Brown is a bad man. One of the worst. But there's folk in Blackwater, powerful folk, who asked my boss to get me to leave him alone. I can imagine. Amos Lansing and Jeremiah Shaw, perhaps? You know, I don't know. Maybe. My lord, look at you. I read about this. Australian, I believe. Always wanted to see if it works. My friends, let me take you up. Come on. Bring us Teddy Brown. Dead or alive. Take that fork. Teddy Brown is in there somewhere. God damn you! God damn you! No! God damn you, Teddy Brown! Hello, Mrs. Leclerc. <sighs> Who killed my husband? Who killed my husband? Your husband? That little milksot? <laughs> I guess I imagined he was your brother. No woman would ever marry his kind. <sighs> I did kill him. I did it. And he was begging for his life. <laughs> Pathetic, really. Who put you up to it? Who? 
Lady, that's none of your damn business. Then I guess we'll kill the lot of them. That's one down, three to go. Mr. Horley, pay our friends for their service. Thank you. We shall be in touch. <laughs> <laughs>